so that was uh, one story. Uh, as Jeff was saying, and uh, as Jason echoed, you know, agriculture is not one thing. Farmers markets are not all one thing. Communities are not all one thing. So I would like to thank uh, Marcy and One Island for coming in and uh, giving us some ideas about what they're trying to do in South Kona. Now, well, up to hobby. Um, you folks are the best resource for your particular communities. So, uh, you know, we'd encourage you to take some of these ideas and, and feel out your community and, and see what will work for you. Um, I think uh, we're very fortunate uh, today to have an opinion and uh, um, a perspective that isn't readily seen at, at a lot of food conferences. And let me tell you, I've been to a lot of them. Um, in addition to uh, that great perspective, you know, I also want to say that uh, these guys are a great partner for us. For us, you know, Sui Sign is a, it, it, they're a great local company. Uh, they're very supportive of, of the food basket. And, uh, you know, in addition to folks like uh, Jason and, and Marcy, you know, they're also trying to make sure that, that local food get, gets in the mix. And here today to talk about uh, local fish from Sui San is Mr. Kalsan. Hi everybody. Uh, feel free to raise your hand if you have any questions while I'm talking, because I really have no idea what I'm supposed to talk about, because I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> I don't know what you guys don't know, and I don't know what you want to learn, so shout it out. Uh, anyways, like you said, my name is Kyle Sumner. I'm the division manager at Suisan of the Fish Division, Fresh Fish Division. That's the one that's located right on the water next to Levi Street. Uh, we originated in 1907. We were at Fish Market. That location was the Fish Market prior to 1907. But the, the Matsuno family took over and created a Suisan company basically in 1907, and it's been a fish market ever since. And it's been owned by the same Matsuno family, local family, local Japanese family, has been here for over 100 years. Uh, I've been with the company for 12 years. I've been with the fish division the entire time. I'm born and raised in Ohio, so I'm not from a fishing family, not from any type of fishing background, nothing like that. I just love the fish. I love the commercial fish. I moved out here, I went to college, I got a degree in business uh, administration and worked my way up through Sumi Sama. I absolutely love it, and so I still do it. The reason I love it is because I love working with the local guys. So one thing that I've changed since I've been at Sumi Sama is we started to be a more buy local, support local type of a company, especially with the fish division. We're on an island, we're surrounded by water. That water is full of fish. So. What's the point of bringing in fish from another country, bringing in fish from the mainland, anywhere else? You have it everywhere around here. So, <laughs> anyways, that's uh, you know that that that's what we do. I'm not going to go into the history. I have these notes over here, and it talks about like the history of Suisan. I'm not going to do that. You guys want to talk about the history? Come down. I'll talk to you later. About it. <laughs> Truthfully, um, I'm just going to jump into basically what we do in the fish market. We deal with 300 plus fishermen on a yearly basis. Those fishermen are all on the big islands. We don't buy fish from another island. We don't buy fish from another state. We only buy locals. So we kind of live and die by what our local guys catch and what our local guys can supply us. All of our boats, or at least most of our boats, is what we would consider the industry smaller boats. We don't have any 110 foot boats that fish for Swiss on. We don't have any long line vessels. We only have handliners. We have people that you go to church with every weekend, and people that you see at the movie theaters every day, and people that you're driving on the street, and you're like, look, there's a boat in front of, in front of their house. Those are probably fishermen that fish for Suisan. Our average size boat is about 25 feet. We have big boats. The biggest boat that we have that fishes for us, I believe, is 46 feet. Probably the biggest boat. Not very big. I mean, think about it. You go to Honolulu, and you see on the docks in Pier 38, they have boats that are 120 feet. You know, recently the state just uh, closed the long line fishing. So currently the only long line fishing that's able to be done in state waters is four permits for people from America, Samoa that have vessels that are over 110 feet or 88 feet, I take that back, 88 feet, sorry. A lot of numbers in my head. Four vessels over 88 feet are a lot of fish anywhere in the state. Then any vessel under 88 feet can fish <coughs> East of the 150 degree la la longitude. Yeah. You guys remember those? Yeah, longitude line? Yeah. So that's 750 miles east of Oahu. So currently, our industry is in what they call a downtime. There's not much fish around. Prices are real high. 
That's great for us. As a local business supporting local fishermen, there's not a much competition. Our fishermen are loving it. They're making a lot of money, you know. <laughs> I wish I was a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like I said, we're at the mercy of what style of vessels we have. Our small boats aren't like the big ones. The big ones, the big long liners can go out, they can catch 20,000 pounds in a trip. They're bringing in 20,000 pounds. Our boats can't do that. My average guys are catching only 2,000 pounds because that's all they can hold. Their fish box is only so big. Their you know, boats are only so big. They can only go out for two days in, in a row because they don't have enough fuel. So we, dealing with the smaller vessels, have different problems that we have, we're faced with. There are times in the year when we are loaded with fish. And the prices come as low as frozen fish does. One of our biggest competitions is frozen fish. So a lot of people like the consistency and pricing of frozen fish. So frozen fish means something that's been cryovacked or poke cubed and CO2 treated and brought in from another country usually because the pricing is cheap. Right now on the market, poke cubes come in cubed, frozen in a one pound vacuum sealed package, CO2 sprayed on top so it holds the color. Average price is about 6.75 already for the poke cube. So a customer that buys that frozen, we don't sell that at Suisse. On our frozen department sells a little bit of it, but at the fish market, we don't sell that. We sell frozen fresh stuff. Our fresh stuff right now, the cheapest I can get poke cubes is like $12. So a problem we're faced with, when you go into the fish market this afternoon and our poke is $19, it's because it's fresh. So one of, that's one of the issues we're faced with is competition from frozen. And that's imported stuff. So that's why we are in the process of trying to get this idea of buying local through to the customers and consumers for not only produce and not only meat, but fish too. A lot of people don't realize it, don't think about it when they go and buy fish. They just assume that it's local because we're surrounded by water, like I said. That assumption isn't always correct. So currently I'm working with the Hawaii Conservation Society and we're, trying, we're releasing this, uh, this app and I, so you guys should check it out. It's going to be released uh, in October. It's called This Fish. And it's going to be a barcoded traceability system. And what you're able to do is on every on menus that are going to be a part of this, there are going to be barcodes, a little QRF code or QR code. When you scan it, it's going to tell you who caught the fish, when they caught it, where it was from, how they caught it, and everything. Now, you guys are privy to this information, okay? Nobody else knows about this. We're doing our big grand release party tomorrow at our food show in Oikolo. So, it may not, if you guys would download it, it may not be out the app. The website is live, they started to do that program in Canada, and you'll see some of it starting piece by piece here in the state of Hawaii. But that is gonna allow us to sell our fishermen's fish, to sell fish caught by specific people that came through Suisan, that is all local and all fresh, and you'll be able to trace it that way. Um, where is that? I just kept talking, I don't even know where is that. <laughs> what a fish uh, one of the problems with buying local though and buying only from the island is that for certain types of fish, not pelagic really fish, but more reef fish and bottom fish, the stocks can be depleted really quickly. So Mempachi, Opello, all bottom fish, Pacas, Onagas, all of that can be depleted real quick. Uh, our island is very steep. The drop off from the ocean down to where the flats are is very quick. So if you're fishing bottom fish and you're trying to fish for a paka paka, there's only a narrow strip that you can fish. That narrow strip can only hold so much fish. If you go to Maui, you go to Kauai, Oahu, their ground underneath the water is real flat and more gradual, so there's more area that they can fish and they can fish more consistently. So we're limited with a shorter distance to fish. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to that. We have what's called an Ono Lake. So in the Ono season, our island sees more Ono than this entire state will. Because the Ono is like a certain depth of water, and a certain depth of water is only 100 feet across. So the guys just fish right there, and all the Onos are there. <laughs> so there's advantages and disadvantages to buying local. Now, you know, you want to buy, you want to eat Ono? Go try and buy Ono right now. You can't find it. It's going to be $28 a pound wherever you go find it fresh. Because there's no Ono, because it's not the season. But in the summertime, when it's season, it's going to be way, way down. So one of the issues we have is that we can't not just sell a specific product. We cannot just sell, you know, Onos year round. We cannot say, hey, we're going to put Ono on somebody's menu. You know, I can't go to the family market and tell them, you guys want to do an Ono special? Because when chefs come out with their menus, they're coming out with menus 
for six months in advance, three months, six months in advance. They don't want to change the menu every other day. So we cannot have them put fresh fish on their menu, really. You're stuck with the price, and the pricing will fluctuate too much. It's hard to do. Some of the more brave customers do. And I warned them all. I said, hey, if you're going to put fresh fish, put something like fresh fish sandwich or, you know, your fish and chips, and not put, like, Ono fish and chips. Don't put this species because you're not available to have it all the time. It's not going to have, have it all the time. Your prices are going to be up and down and left and right and everything like that. Uh, another problem with the local fisheries is that there is a lot of issues with the, with the weather, the storms. Yeah. Hurricanes come this summer, fishing shut down for four days. Fishing shut down for four days, you have no fish when the you know, after four days. Fish doesn't last for four days. We have a 72 hour shelf life. As a wholesaler, our, our idea is 72 hours. From the time we get it, in 72 hours it has to be gone. Because whoever we're selling to has to have an opportunity to be able to sell it. When you go and look at long lining, long liners have an advantage because after 72 hours, the thing looks beautiful. 72 hours after 72 hours, the thing still looks beautiful. The quality of the fish is much, much nicer from long line vessels. The way they take care of it, the way it's caught, it dies on the line, you know, it's just nice red, the eyes stay nice and red, everything like that. The eyes are really nice. And the issue with that is there's bycatch. So a lot of people are worried about, you know, conservation and bycatch, things like that. Long liners have a lot of bycatch. It's one of the reasons we don't deal with long liners. Yes, the fish is nicer, and yes, it's easier to determine your price over a longer period of time because it's more consistent supply. They're always gonna have eyes. But there's so much bycatch. There's so much turtle interactions and false killer whale interactions and everything. You could you name it, you, you know, they just there's so much there's catching so much. So uh, one of the that's one of the reasons Studio Sun really likes to support local too, is there's no bycatch with our local guys. Our headliners, there's no bycatch. They catch something you don't like it, it's not you know not a size, it's a small juvenile tuna, unhook it, throw it back in the water, it still lives. It doesn't die. Long lines bring it up itself dead. Uh, one of the, I wanted to talk a little bit about how the community can support and be involved in the sustainability. What I am trying to do is get the consumers and the customers educated and understanding what buy local and support local means and how to find out how to buy local and how to support local. Basically, if it's frozen fish, it's not local. More than likely, it's not local. Uh, a lot of problems, too, has to do with traceability. If consumers start to demand traceability and start to sit down at a restaurant and ask their waitress, where's this fish from? And the waitress goes, oh, well, let me go find out. Comes back and they should be able to tell you exactly where it was from, when it was from, who caught it, and everything like that. Uh, another problem that we are faced with is if the government is making these laws and making these initiatives. There's not any enforcement of it. There's so little enforcement from the DLNR side of it because the DLNR, you know, I'm not a, excuse me, but I'm not in the government at all, so I don't understand exactly how it works. I just know that as a commercial fisherman, you're hardly ever checked to see if you have a commercial vessel license, if you have your size restrictions correct, if everything is appropriate and what you're catching. There's not enough funds for DLNR agents to come and to enforce these rules. Yes, ma'am? So, but I have another question about that. Sure. You know? Um, I love Opello. That's my favorite fish. Yeah. I walk in the supermarket and it says fresh Opello, and then I yep. go from Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is. That's not a Suisan, by the way. That's not Suisan. It's not Suisan, first off. So, yes, here's the deal. It can be. It says fresh Opello, right? Yeah. It means it's never been frozen before. Doesn't mean it's local. It just means it's never been frozen. Now, that's the problem with saying fresh. It's fresh could mean. It could be three weeks old. Who knows? If it's never been frozen before, it's still fresh. Exactly, see? But fresh, the definition of fresh is so broad. You know, the only, if you look up fresh, it's just going to say not frozen or, you know. Fortunately, my Ohana taught me how to read the fish eyes, so I looked it was fresh or frozen. <laughs> and it was probably fresh. It was probably just, oh, it, was, it wasn't? Well, then you should take that out to the supermarket and say, how come you believe this is fresh when it's not? Yeah. So I was curious. Another thing that'll get people is fresh frozen. <laughs> that one, huh? Fresh frozen. I always like that, too, because... 
fresh could be so such a broad thing. It could be what five days old before you froze it, and then you thawed it out and it sat for five more days. Now it's ten days without being frozen, and so that's why I always urge people to buy fresh, <laughs> buy local, not fresh. Don't just buy fresh, buy fresh local. You know, demand the traceability to know where it came from. Demand where you know it came from and exactly how it got there. Uh, what we do in our industry is more fish. When you're shipping fresh fish. We have little <laughs> stickers that we stick on the fillets inside the boxes. Those stickers check the temperature, time temperature. Check how long it's been under 40 degrees. If it ever goes over 40 degrees, it's gauges to tell us whether it's been mistreated or not. Whether this fish that they say is frozen and you buy it frozen actually came unthawed and they threw it back in the freezer for two days and then sold it as frozen. You don't know. Uh, so there's, there's availability of traceability from every aspect, and every large company does that. So you should be able to ask them exactly to see the traceability of when it came in and everything like that. That, I didn't even have that in my speech about fresh versus fresh frozen or anything, but that's a good point. Buying local means buying local. When you buy local fresh, you know it's from islands. The time from catch to plate is shorter than buying local from Honolulu. Longliners go out on trips for 21 days. Their first fish, by the time it hits market, is going to be almost 21 days old. But by the time it gets to your plate, after the wholesaler bought it, sat on it for three days, it's now 24 days. And by the time you actually take it home and eat it, it's 25 days. That thing could be almost a month old sometimes. So by understanding the traceability of where the fish came from is key to understanding what the quality is like. Or have Johanna teach you. Or have me teach you, I can show you guys. <laughs> but what I really wanted to push is, you know, what we're trying to do at Series and what I wanted to push ideas on you guys is buying local and understanding who the local people are. So I'd say check out that this fish app or this fish um, info.com or this fish info I think will show up too. That will give you an idea of where Suisan is heading so that we can chase the fish and you guys can chase the fish too. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. The difference between the scenario of Su Suisan on the, in East Hawaii and West Hawaii, given that the fleets are quite different in terms of who's fishing and sure. the kind of stuff that's going on, how does uh, talk a little bit about the difference between East and West? Well, and our facilities in West Hawaii, I'm sure everybody's seen it below Costco, a facility there. That's actually a produce facility. That's not fish. It's all produce. The only fish facility we have is here in Hilo. So the only thing we offer in Kona is for our fishermen to pick up ice so that their fish is iced properly. Uh, we do not allow them to drop fish off at Kona Suisan. We force them to drive the fish over to Hilo because we do not buy fish without me looking at it or one of our representatives looking at it. Now the industry difference is that Kona has a lot of sport fishermen. has a lot of guys that go out there for sport. I do not like to buy fish from sport fishermen because they're cheap. They're charging these tourists to come in, $1,000, $1,500 to go fishing. They'll catch this 500 pound marlin, and they'll literally have two bags of ice. Like enough for a 12 pack. And that's not the quality, not good handling of products yet. So, <laughs> so what we do is we try to only buy from the sport guys uh, in Kona. We do buy from some of the more commercialized fishermen over there, but they are limited on who we buy from because we don't like to cherry pick fish. We buy everything they have. What the Kona guys like to do though, they like to sell direct to the stores because there's so many restaurants over there and there's so many hotels and there's so many grocery stores compared to here in Hilo that the fishermen can get a better price if they go direct to the stores. And because there's not a facility like Suisan over there that will be able to buy all of your fish, the convenience for them, the convenience factor doesn't make up for the fact that they can get a dollar more if they sell directly to KTA. Over here in Hilo, we buy everything. You're a fisherman, you come to me, I'll give you ice, I'll give you bait, I'm not going to charge you for it, you can bring all your fish to me, and whatever you catch though, I'm buying. You can catch 5,000 pounds of money a month, I'm buying 5,000 pounds of money a month. Not many other facilities in the state can say that. Because if you go to the auction block and see people bidding on fish, they're cherry picking what fish they want. They control exactly what they're buying. With us, we don't control anything. The fishermen control what we buy. What our fishermen catch is what we buy. Now that being said, those fishermen that we deal with, the 300 plus fishermen, they're not allowed to sell anywhere else. It's not a contract, we don't do contracts. We do it old school style, right? It's 
Brother, brother, I'm gonna go talk to you, okay? <laughs> hey, no, no step outside and like see how sign on the side of the road it says I have a sale 250, okay? <laughs> He's more local. I am not. Is that going to answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> plus some, eh? Yeah, plus, plus plus. Wonderful. I did not want to get into this, but because this is a room full of farmers, Suicide is 100% green with our waste. We, do, we recycle all of our cardboard and all of our. Um, boxes and most of our plastics and everything like that. The only thing we're able to recycle is the plastic that has the um, fish waste on it, like any fish blood or guts or anything like that. All of our blood and guts is used. We have a contract with Palm Valley Farms here in uh, just by Onamea. They're up, up Moco where Onamea is at. Palm Valley Farms has started to take all of our fish waste and make a fish fertilizer with it. They invested a whole bunch of money in this right. program to make a fish emulsion fertilizer from it. And they're in the process of trying to get it certified and make it into a product that they can sell to the farmers. Currently, they're using it for their own purposes. But they take all of our waste every morning. They have big, giant blue brine boxes that we fill up with fish waste in the morning. We forklift down the truck, and they bring us empty ones, and away they go. Before, we used to just dump it because there's nothing we could do with it. We would let farmers come and grab and stuff like that. But they weren't able to take as much as we had. So now we're able to do it where 100% everything goes to Palm Valley. We don't charge them, they don't charge us. We save money and we're giving back to, at least it's going back into the environment. It's not just going to waste. They're able to make fertilizer with it, fertilize the plants, plants yeah. grow, grows into the cows and cows no, get bigger. Close. <laughs> close. <laughs> Better than dumping. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'd, I'd like to just shit. add on to Kyle. My, um, my husband and daughter, they fish out of Pohiki every night when weather permits to catch ahi. And what, I, what we like about Suisun, like he said, is local, local, supporting local, is that they literally come down to Pohiki super early in the morning to pick up fish from these fishermen so that they don't have to drive all the way back out and bring ice and, and stuff like that. So that's, you know, I commend you guys on Who's that. that. Peter Gonzalez. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so we do that. We do, we go we go an extra mile. They go an extra mile time. and they come out and we don't have to drive all the way to Kina to drop them off. So when the eyes <laughs> pick up the fish and the fishermen is good to go to go home and sleep and make ready to get back out. Some more we had a question too? Yeah, you mentioned something happening in my Oh, it's to be totally honest with you, you're not invited. <laughs> it's uh, it's Sun's annual product show, and what we do is we invite all of our uh, owners of all of the restaurants and head chefs from all of the hotels, and they come in and they're able to sample products that our consumers or our you know purchasers have brought in, and it's basically a, a product show for like wholesale to wholesale sales, and we're going to be releasing this to the. Um, chefs and to the owners of the restaurants and we're going to be trying to get them to sign up because without them we can't get the approval to put the barcode onto their menu and we can't get them to allow us to use their names when we're advertising so currently we have some customers but the girls that I'm working with are from Honolulu and they're not real voiced in all of the different stores and places that use fresh fish here so this is gonna be an opportunity for them to release it to them. We're doing it as a slow release. You'll see it out to the public. Public release will be in October, early October. But we're trying to do our best to support them because they are from Oahu, and Oahu is a little bit different in the style that they do things uh, than it is over here. One of the big things that they like about working with us is that we know the fishermen. So I'm able to tell the story of the fishermen because like she said, I you know, we know everybody. You know, I go to people's weddings and baby showers and stuff like that. That's all. That's <laughs> all. Um, so, yeah, sorry. How do you know I'm not hotel chef? Huh? I don't know. I actually don't know. I'm just guessing. If you want well, the other reasons, could you ask what it was? <laughs> so, if you, you wouldn't ask what it was if you knew what it was. So, yes, ma'am. I just put in education's a big part. So, we shop at Suisan, like, every Saturday, part of our routine. Cool. And uh, yeah, my son's grown up on the poke bowl, so it's huge. And um, and last like a couple weeks ago, he bought Walu there or Escobar. Escobar, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you gotta educate people about that fish. 
Mm. How about that specific fish? Yeah. Where's Shania? <laughs> no, we, we, looked, we looked up it because we got it first. Four ounces. Like, how do we take care of this fish? Like, what is this fish? And then we read about it, we're like, we're not going to eat that fish. <laughs> we, we fed it to our bananas. It's, uh, <laughs> it's usually, it's, it's normally, normally made in lalos. Yeah. It's not really what it's done. You usually yeah. salt, 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 salt to where you can't even believe there's so much salt on top of it. Yeah. You leave it for like two months and then it cures it and then you make oh. it small little portions in lalos. Yeah. It's like a replacement of butterfish. Yeah. 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 And I, I love the education part of it, but you know, okay. for, because I'm a in the process, the problem is trying to get everybody in one place to be able to educate them or educate them piece by piece, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Well, I look forward to kind of quickly drop it up, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.